Antiva. Wonderful place. Full of uh, Antivans. Ugly. If you want to bet me, you have only to ask. What? Draw your weapon and say that again. <laughs> I jest, my foul-smelling friend. You are only slightly less attractive to me than a slime-filled pool of swamp water. <sighs> Better be. You have my oath. Uh, bloody Antivans. What exactly are you drinking, my fine dwarven friend? You can't have any. Do not worry. The stench is worse than your feet. What are you doing smelling my feet, huh? Is that some Antivan perversion? It is difficult not to smell your feet. Perhaps in Antiva. Now you're beginning to sound like Bronca. Well, she must have been a dwarf with astoundingly clean feet. I would have thought saving the surface would have involved less walking. Little legs getting tired? I thought these people had animals, horses and such. In Orlais, perhaps, but not here. If you like, I could hoist you up on my back. Hey now, don't start with the... Yes, climb up, and I'll cut you around like a child. Marvelous fun. You knife-eared pipe cleaner. You couldn't carry me on your best day. Hmm. Perhaps if you left behind the spirits, all the weapons, and lost about two feet of beard. Ah, I give up. Just keep walking. You never did answer my question about that filth you so enjoy. That's right, I didn't. How is it that you never seem to run out? Are you purchasing it somewhere? Ah, nobody sells the good stuff. Then are you making it? I don't see a steal at the camp. And you aren't walking around with a cake, so unless you're... Oh, no. What? Where is that perverted elven mind of yours gone? That would explain the smell. Suddenly, I'm not so interested in trying a sample. So is it very strange for you, my friend, living in the world of the tall? Here I thought I was living in the world of the nosy and the stupid. It just occurred to me. Chairs are too high, tables are out of reach. Using the toilet facilities alone must be a lesson in humility. I'm not bloody two feet tall, you swishy nuglicker. And then the light. After all that gloom of Orzammar and the deep roads, it's a wonder you don't wander about squinting in pain. It is bright, I'll give you that. And oh, not to have a roof over your head. You must constantly fear that you'll fall up into that vast, endlessly open sky. <sighs> One day you'll live within the surety of a mountain, and then gone. Nothing but vacuum, nothing to stop you from being sucked up into the void, nothing to... Stop! Yeah. <clears throat> One more word, and I chop you down where you stand. You are a brave, brave little soldier, my friend. Hey, Elf, man. you're all right. Am I? I, I was thinking, I was thinking that you're, you're just all right. Drunk again, Ogren? Drunk again, Ogren? <laughs> you sound like my father. He was all, you're drunk, stop wetting on the table. How dare he? At least my mom had the good sense to hide the booze from him, so, you know, she could drink where he couldn't see her. <laughs> That's heartwarming. Hey, buddy, let's not go crazy or anything. Keep your pants where I can see them. I just don't understand you elves. Not one bit. Oh? Where is your comprehension lacking? These humans, they turn you all into slaves. They, uh, what do they do now? They destroy your homeland. Twice. What is your point, Dwarf? Well, I just don't understand. Why don't you just kill them all? There are a great many more humans than elves, if you haven't noticed. So? There's a hundred humans for every dwarf, too, but you don't see us bending over and getting our pipes clean, do you? That's big talk for a man who lives in the tunnel. All I know is the dwarves would never stand for it. Do you think you elves would have learned to duck? That must be it, exactly. Elf! 
Ogren! I have something to say to you. I am all ears, as we elves like to say. Hey. Uh, well, now I forgot. Alas. Uh, but just know I had something. You've had several somethings, I suspect. It's part of your charm. I think I have a joke for you, my fine dwarven friend. Just don't expect me to laugh. So, a human, an elf, and a dwarf are walking down a trail beside a stream, and they stop to take a piece. All right. Things are looking up. Continue. After, the human takes out some soap and begins washing his hands. We humans have learned how to be clean and hygienic, he says to the others. The elf begins picking some leaves off the trees and wipes his hands with them. We elves do as tradition has taught us, and use what nature has provided. The dwarf, meanwhile, has pulled up his trousers and is already on his way down the trail. And our ancestors, he calls back, taught us dwarves not to piss on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> Shows what you know about dwarves. <laughs> All right, I guess you aren't all that bad. You just decided that, did you? Well, I've watched you fight. You could be worse, I guess. From you, that's practically a proposal of marriage. Don't get excited or nothing. You're not what I'm looking for in a wife. Considering what happened to your last wife, I'll count myself as fortunate. 